In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the amazing masking features in Darktable. I wanted to make a short video to give you a little demonstration of a feature that I love in Darktable and one that I think is far better than Adobe's Lightroom and that's its ability to make local adjustments um, using masks. Now, if you've used Lightroom, uh, you're probably familiar with a brush tool similar to this. Um, it's circular, it's got a feathered edge, which you can adjust. Um, you can adjust the opacity and so on. And this is pretty handy. It's quick and easy to use. And if I'm going to mask something circular, like maybe the baby's head, it's great. But you're really limited to that in a graduated filter in Lightroom. Whereas in Darktable, when you come across things that have a straight edge, like a square, you know, buildings and so on, if you try to mask in the corner, uh, a circular tool doesn't do the right job. You come in, you make it smaller and smaller and smaller, but you really can't mask that corner well. However, in Darktable, uh, we have an awesome little option here, which is a path tool. And now this is very similar to something you'd see in, say, Adobe Illustrator, um, where you can make any path, any shape you want, and you can also do it with straight edges. So you can mask squares, you can mask buildings, you can do so on, and you can do it really, really easily. Um, that's something that I need to do in Lightroom all the time, and I can't, and it's really frustrating. Um, you're not limited to um, straight edges. Uh, I could actually come in with that path tool and maybe just do a quick mask around the baby's head or something. Um, any shape you want, really. And you can always come in afterwards and adjust the edges and how you know, large or small it is and so on. Um, so that path tool is very, very handy. Moving on from there, uh, there's even uh, more ways to mask in Darktable that are uh, far better than Lightroom. And that's instead of selecting an area with a brush um, and just kind of painting it, you can actually select a part of the image um, based on its hue or its luminance, uh, how bright or how dark it is. So in this image, um, parts of this hockey rink here, parts of the ice, it's a little too bright and I want to bring the exposure down. Now, if I was using this brush tool, uh, it's a real pain because I have to work around the hockey players and their shadows to try to get it just right. It really doesn't do the job well. Um, and that's where parametric masks come in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select an area of that ice uh, based on how bright it is. And I'm just going to give a little reference point there because I want that part of the ice to be affected, but not other parts of the image, not the mountains and so on. So, so you can actually see it. I'm actually just going to turn on the overlay. And right now the entire image is being affected by the mask. Uh, everywhere in yellow is uh, part of the mask. But I can come in uh, with this slider and just really quickly and pretty easily just select that part of the hockey rink that I want. So the, pair, the players aren't being selected, their shadows aren't. Very quick, very easy, and so handy. Um, I really love that. Now going even further, there's still more features with the masks and dark table. Um, let's say, so you can see because the ice is bright, and also behind the clouds here, the sun was there, and that's also bright. But let's say I only want the hockey rink and that snow back there to be affected. Um, I can also combine masks. So I can take that parametric mask that I just made, and I can combine it with one of those uh, masks that I just showed you before, where I just quickly draw it with the path tool. And now the only thing affected is the hockey rink, and the sky is not being affected above. Again, awesome feature. The masking is just brilliant in Darktable. I can go even further with this, another feature that's not in light table or, or light room, sorry. Um, and I really wish it was there and it's surprising. Very simple, I just want to be able to invert a mask from time to time. And here I just push a button and now every other part of the image is being affected, but not the ice. I push the button again, I invert the mask, and now it's just back to that hockey rink, uh, the hockey rink. So again, just really fantastic masks in dark table. Um, I won't go into it, but I did mention briefly, um, you could also mask images or parts of an image based on its hue. Um, so I think in this image, uh, I selected just the orange part, and you can see it there with the mask. Now you can do something a little bit similar in Lightroom, uh, but it is limited. Um, but that's something for another video. Anyway, just wanted to give you a little quick uh, introduction to one of the great features in Darktable if you've never seen it before. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button below. If you'd like to learn more, please consider purchasing the open source photography course available at rileybrandt.com slash lessons. More information about the course and links to all my social media sites can be found in the description below.